The Japanese Type 10 is one of the most notable land combat systems today. It is naturally confusing to design a low-weight main battle tank in a world where increasingly heavier armored vehicles are being developed in line with the growing need for ballistic protection. Still, the Type 10 is not the only one of its kind. Analyzing it will help us understand this different approach to main battle tank design. As the weapon detective, we're investigating the Type 10, the latest tank of Japan. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new video, please click the bell button. Type 10 is a highly advanced and a handsome tank. But the different characteristics of this main battle tank inevitably cause controversy. Before starting our analysis, let's take a brief look at the history and examine the technical futures of the Type 10. The Type 61 became operational in 1961. However, a year later, Japan started a new main battle tank development program. Serial production of the Type 74, which was the fruit of this program, began in 1974. Two years later, a new tank project began. This project paved the way for the Type 90, which was introduced in 1990. And again, Japan launched another program of a new main battle tank in the 1990s. There were two main reasons for this development model adopted by Japan. First of all, during the first Cold War years, Japan had feared for a massive Soviet invasion through its northernmost island, Hokkaido. In this period, the USSR was developing a new tank which was superior to its predecessors every 10 years. Japan had designed the Type 61, Type 74 and Type 90 against the T-55, T-62 and T-72 respectively. The second reason was that NATO member countries were constantly developing advanced gun, armor and automotive technologies against Soviet tanks. Japan naturally wanted to adapt these innovative works. So, in the 1990s, Japan began to work on a new tank that could compete with the T-80s. Also, newly developed command, control, communications, computers, intelligence, shortly C4I systems, were offering new opportunities. And Japan did not want to miss these advantages. So, why did Japan choose to develop a new tank instead of modernizing its existing fleet? The answer was actually simple. Japan's infrastructure was not suitable for heavy military vehicles. For this reason, Japanese tanks were more compact than other examples in the world. Therefore, neither the Type 74 nor the Type 90 had enough interior space for the fitting of C4I systems through extensive modernization. Also, the Type 74, designed in the 1970s and had a 105mm gun, could not meet the modern combat requirements even after it's modernized. The 50-ton Type 90 was already too heavy for Japan's infrastructure. The tank could only use 65% of the bridges connected to highways in the country. Therefore, it was wise to develop a new low-weight tank with a powerful main gun equipped with modern electronics. After the Japanese government's Technical Research and Development Institute finalized the study phase of the new tank, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries launched the design works in 2002. On February 13, 2008, the prototype of the tank was unrevealed. On January 10, 2012, the first mass-produced Type 10 was officially introduced at the Japan Grand South Defense Force Fuji School. The three-person crew of the Type 10 consists of a commander, gunner, and driver. Its hull length is 7.9 meters. The tank is 9.42 meters long, 3.24 meters wide, and 2.3 meters high. Depending on the armor package configurations, the combat weight of the tank changes between 40, 44, and 48 tons. 1,200 horsepower Mitsubishi 8VA34 WTK water-cooled V8 diesel engine provides a maximum road speed of 70 km per hour. The range of the tank is 500 km. 
The Type 10 has active hydropneumatic suspensions. It can negotiate 1 meter vertical steps, 2.7 meter trenches, and can fort to a depth of 1 meter. The Type 10 has a 120 mm 44 caliber smoothbore main gun and one 7.62 mm Type 74 coaxial machine gun. There is also a 12.7 mm M2HP machine gun on the commander's hatch. Now, let's look at the technical characteristics of the Type 10. The previous Type 90 has a Japanese licensed production model of the L44 gun of Rheinmetall. But Japan favored developing a new 120mm 44 caliber gun for the Type 10. The name of this gun is also the Type 10. So, why did Japan choose to develop a new 44 caliber gun rather than 55 calibers? Because the shorter gun is lighter and easier to operate in narrow urban areas and woods. The Type 10 is 13% lighter than the Rheinmetall's gun. The new gun's chamber is strengthened to enable higher chamber pressure. So it can fire the newly developed armor-piercing, fin-stabilized, discarding sabot munition with a muzzle velocity of 1600 meters per second. Guess what? The name of this new munition is the Type 10 II. So, thanks to its high muzzle velocity, the Type 10 munition has a similar armor-piercing capability with a round fired from Rheinmetall's L55 gun. There is a muzzle reference system on the front right of the gun. This system is an electronic device that is intended to measure the current value of a tank barrel bend when firing the gun. So, it improves the accuracy. The ammunition holding mechanism of the Type 10's autoloader is tubular, different from the Type 90's claw-shaped one. So, it provides a more problem-free loading feature when the tank is on the move on rough terrain. Also, it has a faster loading speed. Another factor that improves the Type 10's combat capability is its C4I systems. The tank has the automatic enemy search function. After the sensors detect the target, the computer automatically identifies it. A Type 10 tank in a platoon can detect identify and track up to 8 targets simultaneously. The platoon leader can automatically assign the optimum target to each tank by pressing the automatic allocation display. This feature prevents more than one tank from attacking the same target unnecessarily. Thanks to its network-centric warfare capability, the information can be exchanged between the platoon to core levels. The fuel, ammunition, Malfunction status of each tank are shared with the different levels of headquarters in real time. The advanced fire control system of the Type 10 can drag the gun toward the target's weak point automatically. Its circular error probable at a range of 1 km is about 5 cm. This fire control system can also determine the effect of the round on the target and recommends a new shot if it's necessary. The Type 10 has a variable geometry turbocharger, which is more efficient in terms of power output and fuel consumption. Also, it is fitted with hydraulic mechanical transmission. The tank can go both forward and backwards with a maximum speed of 70 km per hour. Because the power pack is efficient enough, the Type 10 is fitted with a 1200 horsepower engine. Naturally, it is lighter than those with 1,500 horsepower. The driver's equipment is still unclosed officially. But some sources claim that the driver has a motorcycle-like T-handle with an accelerator and brakes on it. So if it is true, the Type 10 does not have the accelerator and brake pedals. Many viewers may think that the ballistic protection of the Type 10 is low, considering its combat weight. Actually, this is not quite true. Thanks to the advanced metallurgy techniques, Mitsubishi heavy industries use a more durable but lighter kind of steel for the mainframe of the tank. On this mainframe, there are modular, composite and ceramic plates. These armor plates are removable. So, depending on the mission characteristics, the protection level of the tank can be increased or decreased. Also, a damaged part of the armor can be changed easily in field conditions. This modular design makes the Type 10 lightweight. So, 
It can pass over 84% of the highway bridges of Japan. As we mentioned before, the basic loadout of the tank is 40,000 kg. Its standard loadout is 44,000 kg. The Type 10 has a 48,000 kg combat weight with its full armor packages, but this configuration has never been seen. Thanks to its modular design, the tank could be equipped with more advanced armor packages in the future. There are laser warning receivers mounted on the four corners of the turret to improve survivability. When an incoming missile is detected, the tank launches its smoke grenades to hide. However, the Type 10 does not have a modern type active protection system. We looked at the technical characteristics of the Type 10. Let's start our analysis. According to the Japan Grand South Defense Force, survivability and ballistic protection are not the same. The current general acceptance in the world is that the main battle tank can fight for a long time on the battlefield. It should be able to protect its area or continue its attack despite the fire of enemy tanks and infantries. The Japanese, on the other hand, adopt a more flexible approach. According to them, a tank should quickly go into the battle and give the heaviest damage possible to the enemy. And if it is no longer wise to stay in the combat zone, it should be able to retreat quickly. The Japanese find it unrealistic for a tank to stand on the battlefield after many hits. If hit, the tank will leave the area, change its damage sections and return to fight again. It is really difficult to track and hit a vehicle that is fast, agile and can accelerate rapidly. However, these capabilities decrease as the weight increases. The problem is not just about the power of the engine. High weight brings along high momentum. It is difficult for a tank moving at high speeds to respond to brake or maneuver commands. It drags harshly. Of course, this is also a problem for a tank between 40 to 50 tons. However, it is an easier problem compared to a 60 to 70 ton tank. The autoloader is a complicated mechanism. It is likely to be inoperable after the tank is hit several times. But it increases the rate of fire significantly. The autoloader is a good choice for a tank that will quickly enter the battlefield, shoot at the enemy as much as possible, and quickly move away from the area when it is hit. Japan is not alone in this concept. The trace of the Type 10's design criteria goes back to the French Leclerc tank. South Korea also accepted the same approach when it designed the K2. Japan plans to have only 300 tanks in the future. These tanks will mostly be deployed in Hokkaido. A relatively light main battle tank means easier strategic deployment for Japan. As we mentioned in our Type 16 video, as an island country, the real defenders of Japan are its naval and air forces. If the air superiority is lost, this country cannot win a possible battle in Hokkaido. When the Japan Air Self-Defense Force regains air superiority, the Japan Grand Self-Defense Force will require relatively light armored but high speed vehicles to counterattack. We explained this thesis in detail with the success of the French Daguerre Division in 1991 Gulf War. For more detailed analysis, please check out our AMX-10RC video. Many people assume that the Type 10 is a lightweight main battle tank to deal with asymmetric threats. According to our analysis, it is a wrong assumption. The tank does not have explosive reactive armor or grill armor packages against the shape charge anti-tank systems with tandem warheads. Its protection level against landmines and improvised explosive devices is weak. The 12.7mm machine gun operated manually, whereas all modern tanks designed against asymmetric threats use remote-controlled weapon station to protect the crew from nearby threats. Compared to many modern Western tanks, the Type 10 is a system designed according to different geographical conditions, threat perception, and operational requirements of Japan. From this point of view, it makes no sense to argue whether it is better or worse than the M1 Abrams or the Leopard 27. 
Undoubtedly, it is better for the Japan Grand Self Defense Force than the others. However, it is a fact that the Type 10 may have serious problems when used outside of Japan or even outside of Hokkaido. Thanks for watching our video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you liked our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button.